reached up to number five as K Billy super sounds of the 70s continue. <laughs> Ever since the moving picture was first invented, music has been a huge part to its success. Even some of the first films ever made were accompanied by an orchestra or some form of musical expression. There's no question about it that if music wasn't there to complement our visuals, film, as we know it, would not be the same. Today, I want to explore the uses of music in film, namely one technique commonly known as contrapuntal sound or counterpoint. Contrapuntal sound is essentially a juxtaposition between what we see on screen and what we hear through score. It is essentially the art of utilizing music that traditionally would not be expected to be played within the scene it is used. Composer George Burt writes, The word counterpoint is applied to situations involving two or more lines, where each line has a sense of independence or integrity of its own. When combined, they make a statement that is larger than each of the component parts. Look at the feeling! Blue Swede, 1973, that song belongs to me! So, the first question that needs to be asked is, why do artists utilize contrapuntal music in their films? Well, the simplest answer is to say that they use it to elicit an emotional response from the viewer. And I'll do my best to try and explain what that means. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. These are some examples of counterpoint music at its best. In these scenes we see images of war and devastation, things that normally put us at unease. However, accompanying these images with a lighthearted soundtrack provides an almost enhanced emotional feel. It elicits an empathetic reaction to the visuals, as the viewer subconsciously wonders how something so beautiful can be so sad. Two German men named Axel Berndt and Nut Hartmann, I probably got that wrong, wrote about contrapuntal sound stating, Audiovisual counterpoint describes music that controverts the scene. It enriches or even changes the meaning of the images and comments. A happy scene that is accompanied by sad music is perceived as very serious, hiding invisible danger. This effect could be properly recognized in this clip from the intro scene to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. In this clip we are viewing relatively mundane landscape shots cut to incredibly dire and dramatic music. This scene accurately sets the tone for the entire film, which is not something the film's creator would have been able to do without the music. Moving away from this, we can view the uses that counterpoint music has on character development. Girls in white in a perfume night when the lights are bright as the stars. Put on your Sunday clothes, we're gonna ride through town in one of those new horse-drawn open cars. Michael Isaacson, a musical composer, wrote quite a lot about his beliefs on contrapuntal sound. He says, Think of your score not as a monolithic entity, but as a running contrapuntal commentary, always revealing, explaining, clarifying, and adding an adjunct context to the visual and the dialogue. This is to say that music should always be working to reveal information about the story, which is why this specific example of Wally is so poignant. It is easy to understand from the visuals that the world this movie takes place in is one that has previously had a very unhappy ending. The wasteland that we can recognize as a city on Earth seems completely barren of all life aside from the protagonist. As the scene continues, we see that the music is originating from Wally. This tells us a few things about his character that we can easily understand, regardless of how consciously we register it. It lets us know that the protagonist has a positive outlook on life, despite the negative world he lives in, and in turn, it works to establish his place in this world as a juxtaposition in itself. It makes sense for the music to be polarizing because we are following a character whose emotional state is the polar opposite of his surroundings. 
Referring back to Isaacson's statement, this example of counterpoint sound is completely successful as it not only reveals additional information about the story, but it also explains the emotional mood of the character we follow for the rest of the film. So it's quite clear at this point that contrapuntal music can be used to elicit a different emotional response than the visuals would provide on their own. But something else worthy of exploring is the comedic potential that this method can have. See this scene from Edgar Wright's Shaun of the Dead. Okay, John, it's time at the bar. In this scene, the characters are placed in a dire situation, and it would be quite scary to watch if not for the tone change that the music choice brings. The song helps the scary scene that's intended to be funny actually be funny. If the music choice was something more contextually appropriate, we wouldn't laugh at the characters' antics, we would question them. In a similar vein, this kind of comedic addition through music can be seen in Season 2, Episode 6 of Community. That's right. Prepare to meet the power of imagination. Okay, I don't know why I thought this would work. Now, this is a scene from a TV show and not a movie, and it should go without saying that contrapuntal music actually has a place in nearly all forms of narrative storytelling and is not just tied to high-budget films. In fact, some very famous and well-known uses of the method come from popular video games. Children waiting for the day they feel good. Happy birthday somewhere. They are the sea. Somewhere waiting for me. I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. It's pretty much undeniable that musical juxtaposition holds incredible value in modern storytelling, from complementing the visuals, to setting the tone, to describing a character's motives, and to enhancing comedic effect, contrapuntal music is there as a tool to help the creator bring a greater sense of meaning into their product. I'm Spencer Seibert, telling you to take it easy.